some reason because it picks up too much. So I'm uh, sorry for that. I had a great introduction, but I'm not starting over. So Steve and Charlie, come out here. Tell us a little bit more about you. They're with Primary Residential Mortgage. They've been here a few times. Um, always kind of entertaining instruction. What do they call it? Uh, edutainment. Edutainment. <laughs> edutainment. <laughs> so we're going to learn about chat GPT today. So come on up here, guys. you got to click here. Um, let me just reset this since I clicked on it and introduce yourself however much more you want. And then let's rip into it. Okay. Okay. A um, lot of you may know us. A lot of you might be the first time. Um, I'm Steve Turner, the primary residential mortgage. Uh, it's Charlie Brown. I'll let him introduce himself a little better, but we've both been in the business since the 90s, so we're really young, and um, uh, that's probably a good place to start. <laughs> yeah, so what Steve and I like to do, one of the things that we try to do is go out and, and share education that we've got that we've learned through experience and stuff like that. I like to get since 94 in the mortgage business. Um, both of us have worked a lot on the back end of it, so we're very familiar. We've both had corporate jobs for a long time, uh, so we're really familiar with that intricate process of putting a loan together. And one of the things that, that, that we especially like doing is incorporating the technology. We've got probably at primary, there's probably over 100 different applications that you use in the mortgage process. And a lot of these things are consumer facing. You know, we're able to use them, and ChatGTP is one of those new programs that's not new, new, but it, it's it's relatively new. It's at the front of it right now. It's just like when the internet came out. And so we're really excited about using ChatGTP to, for our business. And we want to be able to share it with you guys and see if we can help you find one thing that you're not doing today with it, or if you're not using it at all, that you can go and incorporate in your life. Has everybody used ChatGTP that's in here? Has everybody been in logged in? Very little. We've been in. And R Richard, is it Richard? You're One the afternoon, a little bit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you're an expert. No, nice. <laughs> so, so our goal, the whole goal of today is if you're not using chat GP, we want it to be like the internet. When you're on the internet, you should be using chat GP. Okay. You should use it for all kinds of things. We're going to go into a little bit more. We're going to talk a little bit about what chat GTP is. We're going to talk a little bit more about next slide when Steve brings that up so I can see it. I'm going to take the clicker away because I can't keep in focus. We're going to talk about getting started. We're going to talk about uh, the applications for it. We're going to talk about prompt engineering and also just a few tips and tricks in it. So my, my thoughts too is uh, before I get too far into this, how many remember the MLS about 25 years ago? Anyone old enough for that? No. Old oh, enough. It wasn't like 22, 20 years ago, but... So way back in the day, it was a book that you got, right? No, I can't. I'm really high end. I remember the book. The, the one that just left, she had a book. <laughs> so if, if you were trying to do well, real estate using those books, how well that work today? It's too, yeah, by the time the book came out. So those properties aren't even available anymore. Yeah. I, I view chat GPT a lot like um, just an evolution of, of when you're having technology on the board. I mean, um, some of you may, you know, eight tracks would be in back the day to use it in your car. And then it was cassettes and CDs. You still got an eight track by the uh, No. <laughs> I didn't have a set player then somewhere. Though. But, um, you know, and so this is, is a lot of that too. I mean, uh, and uh, a lot of the philosophy, like at our corporate level, is um, you grow or you die. And that's part of you know, learning this. And that's really kind of the idea is learning to grow and learn to use technology in here. So, so uh, ChatGP is a generative pre training transformer. And everybody knows what that is, right? Don't need to explain it. Yeah. I don't know what it is. I'm so glad to look this up and go, what? is a generative transformer. So if we go to the next slide, it, what it does is it, it, it's a deep learning model, okay? And that's part of the what's called the transformer architecture family. This is a lot of technical stuff that I, I still don't know what it does. My son does this stuff all the time and he can't even explain it to me. He just does this because I'm old. But it's a deep learning model that's generative, which means it can it can respond to text. It can generate text as you're using it. So anybody who's been to chat DTV, you type in a prompt, it gives you an answer. It's pre-trained, which means that they took a, a massive amount of data, this is huge amount of data, they put it in a, in a system and let ChatGP learn to train itself on it. Mike, for it. You went too fast. I'm going to take that away from the morning. We can I can't get a Okay, the data set, nobody knows what ChatGP, uh, OpenAI knows, but nobody knows exactly how large that data set is, but it was huge. I mean, it was trillobytes of data that they put into it. 
And fine tuning on it just means that it can go in and it, and it can give a more refined response. So as you continue to refine your prompt, the response from chat T GTP, did I say G I GPT? I said it wrong I, for I, all the time. G so P P P P does it, does anyone here speak French? No polyglot will say. <laughs> so a friend of mine French. speaks French. And so, but keep in mind, it's a good friend of mine, so he may or may not be truthful, but I've been told that in French, when you say cat GTP, what you're really saying is cat, I farted. And so, that might <laughs> help remember as you go on to do that every time someone says it on TV. Sure. Sure. Uh, so, anyways. Next slide, Steve. Okay, so what can chat GTP do? Okay, you can do a, an amazing amount of stuff. I mean, it's just, we're, we're I think we'll get Shortlist might be what it can't do. That's a great, Actually, a great it point. Can do shortlist, you just tell it. Yeah. And, and, and so. it, I think we're just scratching the, the tip of the iceberg. And that's why we all have to be using it just in our daily life. But uh, answer simple questions, just like a, a, you type in something into an internet browser and ask it a question. The neat thing about it is it gives you a direct response instead of sending you to 387 websites. Yeah. Anything you just Google to find out, you could ask. Yeah, the chat. Yeah, it'd yeah. probably be faster, better. Chat DP is what Google wishes it was. Can you ask it for links? I have tried to ask it for links and haven't been successful yet, but it will reference. I, I do have reference websites, so I can ask it specifically a specific question about a website, and it will tell me it'll take me there. But I haven't been able to get a link out of it yet. I've never uh, tried so, and I and I haven't tried in depth. What, what do you mean by feedback commands? You can ask it to ask you questions. I see. Okay. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. Because you know, I, I set mine up. I did this a while ago, but one one setting you can do that because one of the big knocks of this chat against chat is that it, it sometimes can BS you, right? It can give you crap information, right? Yeah. It's that, yeah. And, and so, <laughs> yeah. so one of the things I said under cite your source because you can tell it to cite its source, mm -hmm. and you can also have it tell you what the level of confidence is in its oh, answer. Right. Yeah. And I, I did that one time. I forgot how I did it, but I read some said don't want to do this, so I did that. And I I like that because it will say at the bottom high level of confidence or medium or low. I'm right? Yeah, I'm bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, so, so, anyway, I just thought that was something I'd point out. Okay. No, that's a really good thing. That's, that's one of the things that we we cover. Okay, a little bit. So I'm, I'm no, you're good because that's really a key point okay. in here to keep yeah. in mind that a, a lot of folks are, are thinking that maybe this is going to replace them. You know, there's not going to be any realtors, there's not going to be loan officers, there's not going to be any writers. It's just going to take over. Yeah. But the reality is, um, what it can do is it's tool. And it can help you be more efficient, better yeah. at what you do, but it's not going to replace you. You still have to have someone who's the expert who that's right. says, no, no, that's not quite right, or that's not what I'm doing, uh, and so forth. And well, so, yeah, because I mean, the stuff that it puts out, you can just tell people to post stuff or put things out. You can tell if it's AI generated. Unless yeah. they went in and made enough changes to it to make it seem more human again, then you can really tell. Well, and, and now yeah. there, there's applications that you can take something that, it, that check. GPT generates, and you can put it in under one called uh, humanized. I think it's called humanized. Humanized. Yeah. That will actually humanize it because now Google and other browsers are starting to have applications that they go in and look for that and they block them. So they don't want people just grabbing stuff off chat and GPT, posting it on the, and just posting and posting. You could do 100 posts a day if you wanted to, because it's not that tough to do now. But they want to make sure that they're real. And so that's what we have to do. It's a tool, but a tool can be misused. It's like censorship. <laughs> way, yeah. Has anybody known about yes. Amazon reviews? We're not going to get into the fake news yeah. uh, commentary here for <laughs> reviews. Yeah, it's on Amazon. What they're starting to do is they're having AI go through all the reviews and then it makes a summary at the beginning of the reviews. And that, that gives you, if you haven't been on much, you can read that and you kind of see the interesting the okay. voice yeah. in the AI. Yeah, it, it's everywhere. It's going to be everywhere. I mean, it's, it's everywhere already. We just don't know all the places it is. Yeah. You and know, it's and that's what's essential fascinating. To about it. It's like whatever you think Google's potential is, it's like a thousand times bigger. Yeah. yeah. They say, I mean, it's going to like the internet revolutionized stuff for us, right? I mean, just having that data available on our, on our computer. Okay. They say that AI is going to be much bigger than the internet, just how it's going to change our society and change our abilities yeah. as human beings to interact throughout everything that we do. Um, so that's it might be, it might be, you know, no, well, we were talking and whatnot. And so I can, so can you go back to that? Absolutely. Like, your last one, that one, one modification. And you can get this PowerPoint. Okay. 
Sure. You're welcome. I, I write it down. I remember it better. Mm -hmm. It's cool because when you write stuff, you get get the feedback commands, modification. What's nice about it is you can link and stuff. You can you take a, a text document. If you have the free version, okay, you have to put it in as a text document. If you go to the plus version on four, you can actually upload a PDF and it'll read that for you. Okay. Yeah, what, are your, what are your opinions on that, the paid versus the free? Because I do the 20 bucks a month and I, I don't know, maybe I'm wasting money. I don't know. It, it depends no, on the application. Yeah, I would say it depends on the application. It depends on the, per, uh, the person and what you're doing. Because if you're a math person, doing a lot of math, uh, you're going to want the plugins and you're going to want the version of Secure Towards Math. Uh, if you're not, there's no, not necessarily great. If you're doing a lot of boilerplate type stuff and you're not getting really deep in that, a lot of times the free version is good. Um, there is an extension that we'll talk about in here in just a little bit that also makes it um, uh, really kind of neat too. Um, I don't have to myself on that. So. Yeah, and, and you know, the free version, I still use the free version because I also use Gemini and I also use Copilot. Okay. And so both of them are the same thing. They're like that ETP. Gemini is Google's version of it. And then Copilot is Microsoft. Microsoft has a large investment, a large stake in open AI. And so you can go in and use both of those tools. And I use them together. Sometimes I'll take the same information, kind of both of them, because that'll get the same result. Mm -hmm. And so you can look at those. And then you can take all three of those components and compile them into one document, copy into a Word document, and paste it into chat GP and ask it to analyze it, ask it to make it sound like me, to do that kind of stuff with it. So I haven't had a need yet to buy the version. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, what you're doing, like my, my son is a, is a computer programmer and he writes software. He pays for his version of it because he uses it all day long. They use Codan all day long. And you couldn't do really that very well on the free version, but the paid version is very effective. So it really depends on the application. Okay. But for most of the stuff that we're doing, that I'm doing, and that I think a lot of real estate agents would be doing is very generic. I don't know if you would need the paid version for that. I would say I'm not a power user to yeah. the extent that I think I need that. I don't know why I bought it, but. Yeah. If, I, yeah. if it gets the best. if it gets to the point that the free version doesn't yeah. do what you need it to do, it's not reducing the results that you want, then you may want to look at the paid version. But stuff is coming out so fast and the reiterations of all of this is so quick that a lot of times I think those free versions are going to keep up with the paid versions because there's a lot of that stuff is trickling down into those as well. Um, instructional prompts we talked about and informational extraction. Nice about informational extraction, if you have a document, the one limitation we'll talk about is the one limitation with the free version is 3,000 words. Okay, So you, you can't get you can't get as much information into it as you want to uh, and what, you, know, and you may have to break stuff up into separate documents if you try to put any, but it'll extract data. So you can go through and look for data. You can look for stuff in the contract. You can look for information in a large email or something like that. Or, or there's any task in here. My name mentioned it. You know, anybody blind copied on an email, there's like, yeah, like, 300 people on that email. And it's, the thing is like, literally like, you have to keep scrolling through to get through. You can take that email, post it into chat DPP and say, are there any? Is there anything in this email that I'm specifically responsible for? No, pull it back for it. Let you know. Really cool stuff like that that it can do. Uh, next slide, see. Didn't double page. And can you do that in the free version? I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, but you you're, you may be limited. To, it depends on how long the email is. You may have to break it up into chunks, put it in, but you can still do it. Okay. So I don't get those too often, but occasionally, I'm like, okay, that's a lot of information. I don't want to read through the whole thing. Like, probably something I assume. Yeah, I probably was something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, 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 do I need to do anything? <laughs> um, optimize and improve various communication channels, property descriptions. There, and this is more specific for realtor stuff that, that people are doing with chat uh, GPT today. Marketing plans and calendars, which are really cool. But we're actually incorporating this into business plans and stuff for Do next year. Using it. Yeah. Um, Lynn, it's some really cool tools. So for doing oh, marketing plans and business plans and those types of things, Charlie and I are actually working on that for um, upcoming years. So how do you use it with calendars? Um, there's some plugins where um, there's there's an example I've got later for you to hear that um, we'll talk about that I think will help with that. But also with uh, where it talks about um, um, doing plans and stuff. And so you can actually do something like record this meeting uh, and it will summarize everything into bullet points for you. As well as record it, and then it can also generate tasks. You can dump audio into it. No wonder people are listening. Yeah, it's, it's easier with paid version to do audio, <laughs> but you can do it without. Um, he was messing around with it earlier um, today. I, I I have the you know of course there's an app for it. Um, so I have the app on my phone, and you can you can talk and it will respond to you verbal. But why, why don't you do that? Just throw it on. 
we'll we'll talk for a little bit yeah, and then show us and then app, just because I know there's a few different apps. So so there. you want to go you want to go directly to openai.com forward slash chat GTP and then and when you're looking in the app store and find that it's not with the up uh, uh, my glasses on. I saw Apple just had some app. Are they running the exact same? Stuff. Yeah, a lot of it's be, what I call a Ford Chevy argument. You know, which one's better? They both kind of do the same thing. But um, is it even different? Back different different engineers it. built it, so it'll handle a little bit different. Mm -hmm. So as far as you're actually using it, what it'll actually do at the end of the day is the same thing. But that's part of it's not just a different interface, it's a whole different so here's one of the things you want to watch for when you're looking for stuff. See how this says it's powered by OpenAI? Mm -hmm. Okay, it's not OpenAI. It's using OpenAI's technology and their information. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to get that app. So it's in effect more of a plugin. So the AI. you find the one that says the official app by OpenAI. So, yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. So yeah, that's what he had. Yeah. Because I was going to get the green one that was like, it's what my buddy has. Oh. Mm -hmm. They somehow have huge facilities in this game. I just realized something. He was asking a question, probably with this, but I did, like I said, I subscribed to it and I used it on my phone, but I hadn't logged in my, on my phone under the subscription. So mm -hmm. I was only using 3.5 on my phone. And I just realized I had to log in mm -hmm. differently. And then when I did, it picked up my subscription. Now I can get four. Yeah. Phone, yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. So you would log in any device that so you that use it on, you would log into. But that is one thing that, that two, you want to be careful of when you're doing it. You make sure that you go to, uh, again, so there's probably right now in AI, there's last I heard, there was over 5,000 different applications in AI. Okay, so you want to make sure when you're selecting an application, just like anything else, be careful when you download. Make sure you're getting what you actually think you're getting and not somebody that's trying to spoof it because that's a big thing of powered by open AI. So people hear, oh, it's powered by open AI. That must mean it's open AI. That just doesn't mean it's open AI. It just means that they're using open AI's technology for their app. Now that doesn't mean that the app is bad. That just means be aware of what you're getting into, okay, what you're actually downloading and using. Um, I'm way ahead. Those want addresses, so oh, I'll pop that up. So yeah, perfect. We'll, we'll back up then. Okay. This question probably doesn't really matter, but just more curiosity. Was, was Microsoft the main player behind chat? Did that come from Microsoft with chat GTP? No, the OpenAI is its own entity. Okay. Microsoft invested heavily in it though. They were um, big, but yeah, they were yeah, big players. Yeah, they invested heavily. That's why. So if you use Copilot, if you heard of Microsoft mm -hmm. Copilot inside of Bing. That is chat GTP4. I see. So you can get to chat GTP4 that way. And that's why I don't pay for a version of OpenAI yet, because I can get it in chat GTP4. And then I can also use Gemini and Google, which has a it's a different architecture, a little bit different architecture. So the results aren't going to be the same, but you can use them in combination. Where did you say you're getting the four one? Uh through uh, uh copilot. Copilot through B or mm -hmm. Edge. You can get it in Bing or Edge, either one. And that has chat GTP4 incorporated into it. It looks different, works a little bit differently, but it is actually using that data. And, and again, there's there, there's a couple of things about the, the chat GTP4. It, it just gives you more, you have more ability, larger data sets, not data sets, but larger capacity to upload stuff like if you're uploading the contract. I think it's 330. We talked it's, about it's, <laughs> I can't remember the amount of data. It's in here. The other thing I read about four was it said that you get faster response times. If it's really busy and black backed out, if you're on four, you get priority. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and go ahead. I was just going to say so, how are they monetizing it that they have so much of it for free? Well, the paid subscription, a lot of people use a paid subscription. Somebody that uses it all day long, they're probably it's paying for free. Subscription. It's free. Yeah. yeah. And it's, also, it's also a learning model. And so the stuff that you're putting into it, it's learning from. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, I love you. And it's uh, kind of like Facebook where you are the commodity. Facebook's free because so the more we use it, the more it learns, then the better it can get and the better they can chart. Well, the they're, they're probably still checking. They're probably still, still trying to acquire the data, just like Yahoo and Google and all they did initially, and then eventually they started well, we'll jump, we'll jump to the they got there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so that, that that figure out how to free lines yeah. and, and one of the things with OpenAI is you can opt out of it using your data to grow its knowledge base. Okay, so you can do that. If you do, it won't save your chat history, so you won't have any of that information. So if you if you use that, I tried that. You have to copy that stuff and mm -hmm. save it someplace else. It won't be in there. But if you let it use that data to learn and the stuff we use it for, there's nothing in there. 
you know, I make sure, you know, I never put anything that's confidential in there, like any type of non-public information or anything like that, you know, but any generic stuff, I don't care. I want it to learn from it. I want it to get better. So I let it use that, but you can't, you do have that option to opt out of that. Even in the free version, you can opt out of it learning from you. You know, just like, just like on your phone, you know, if you want to send feedback to Apple on how you know, mm -hmm. the use of your phone so that they can improve it. I let them do that. That beats also the purpose though of it accumulating information about you so it knows more about you so that your answers are more specific yeah. based on your goals, your business, your needs, and your history. Yeah. And, and a lot of people say, ask me questions about my business to just beat it. Mm -hmm. So right. I would think you would want that. Yeah, most people would. Mm -hmm. I, I can't, some people are just big brother, you know, they just get so concerned about, I think, you know, the government's too involved and the big business is too involved. They in are. Government now, but, which they could be, yes, but, but you can't do anything about it. Yeah, we can't do anything about it. Stop it. Yeah. They don't do anything. I'm like, if nobody has anything better to do than to listen to my phone calls and read my emails, let them have at it. Well, <laughs> that's boring. Not, it's yeah, just boring. Exactly. They they're not the end there. They're going to be very exciting. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, since we were talking about it, I just popped into this screen here because this is, um, you know, goes back into you need to know what it is that you're researching because it can give you inaccurate or inappropriate responses mm -hmm. for what you're doing. Um, you know, if you're in college and you're trying to write some papers, um, you might be English plagiarism. Um, so it's just things to do. And, you know, for like real legal advice or medical advice, you really want to talk to an attorney, you get a doctor, you don't want to use chat because, you know, <laughs> right. so for the like when you Google it, it's always cancer. You're always going to die. For the plagiarism of copyright, is it? <laughs> Is the chat GPT copyrighted or is the source they got it from? It's potentially the source it got it from, it from which could be copyrighted because it's been typically drawn all the material from the internet since is it uh, September of 2021. Yeah. And so if someone's got some copyrighted material out there um, and chat GPT pulled it and you just copy and paste. Present it as your own work. Um, you know, it's not to my endorsement. Just like Terry asked the second source, could you ask it to identify any copyrighted material in its conclusion? Mm -hmm. its answer? Yeah, I never mean, tried that, but I think you could. I think you could go in and, and ask it if something that source would tell you that it's copyrighted. You know. And and it's always good sometimes to check those sources because when it's making stuff up, um, I mean there was an attorney not that long ago that got in trouble because they Googled some or used it a little bit and made up all these case laws that didn't really exist. Um, have all these wonderful sources, and then they presented it. Oh, well, it wasn't real long. Was big, 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 big. <laughs> and just like you know, what when when you read anything on the internet, I don't know how it goes, but I always read it with a bit of skepticism. You know, so now everything to read on there. Huh? You got it. Yeah, and so so I do that, and, and if I'm like. I like this, but I really am not sure about this particular aspect of it. I'll I'll go to another source and try to verify. Oh, you see videos now. Well, deep fake videos. Set, deep well, fake videos are huge. Um, uh, depending on what plugin they like to using, you can uh, take text and turn it into a video. Um, well, I see a bunch now on Instagram of some celebrity telling me that they've got to give these things away. There, and I'm like, pretty sure that whole video is just fake. There, there are AI programs out there now that can take videos of you. And they can make an avatar of you that looks very, very real, okay, and create a video. And you can write a script, and it will do that script with you on that video. It, it's, it's we not, totally right. just saw that. You can do headshots uh, now. Yeah. yeah. The, they can yeah. headshots. They can change your face. Yeah. They can put me in a different shirt. I'm mean, a charming shirt. Which yeah. Is, yeah. I could lose thirty pounds in thirty seconds. <laughs> so. so yeah, it's 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 just. It's unbelievable the amount of power behind this and the stuff that it can do. And the big thing, again, what we want to accomplish today, if you're not using it, you should be using it every day. If you're logging into your computer, you should be logging into chat GTP and use it for something. Help you to write an email, help you to make a list, help you to do a media agenda, help you to come up with a video script, um, help you to come up with bullet points for an open house flight, you know, whatever you're making. Use AI to start to use it because once you start using it and you just, you just get that little taste of it, You'll get you'll get where you want to use it more and more because it's just going to make your life simpler. And like Steve had mentioned, it you know it's AI is not going to replace anybody. We're not going to have all robots running around doing all you know, We're not going to be annihilated. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but what, what's going to happen is if we're not if we're not using AI as professionals in the in the real estate industry, somebody else is going to be using it, yeah. and they're going to take it. Well, to Richard's point earlier, and I find myself doing this more and more. When you Google something, you have to then 
filter through all the sponsored crap at the top and figure out which of the top 10 or 15 that you want to click on. Right. If you do AI and you ask that same question, you get a lot more concise right there answer. It doesn't, you don't have to, you don't have to go through that process. Right. And what's nice about it? You can ask the follow up question too. Yeah. And so even in the free version of Chat GPT, okay, you can go in and ask it. So you can go in and get what they call web chat. Okay. And you can use that and you can type in there, like, for instance, like messing around with it when I'm kind of checking that out, I type in who won the 2004 24 Super Bowl. Well, Chat GPT can't answer that question itself because it doesn't know that that data, and it didn't happen yet. That again, it ended in September 2021. And so what it did is, is I sent it out to the web, it went out and it pulled in four articles, okay, and had four articles in there and it referenced them and told me which article it was, where it came from, which publication produced that article. And then I said, summarize this for me with the four key bullet points of the game. So I talked a little bit about Patrick Mahone, about Chief. It went through that and gave that to me. I didn't have to read all those articles. Now, if there was information in one of those bullet points that I wanted to get more information. I could go back and reference that article. Then I could have continued that conversation with it, asking for more information on this aspect of it. So that's what's kind of cool about using a plugin, something like WebChat, GTP, is that you can go in and get that data and you can summarize it without having to read through. I didn't have to read through each one of those articles. This, this whole process took me less time than what I just spent talking about to get that information. So on any TV series that came out before September 2021, I can ask it for some reason. Tell if you go and if you go into WebChat GTP and well, it'll be one of the things it'll do like it's really great. It summarizes books. I know. Does anybody anybody use short form in here? It's a book summary app kind of thing. So I use short form because I just not have time to read a lot of the books that I'd like to read and listen to audio and stuff like that, Audible. But you can go in and ask it to summarize a book. Say, summarize the book. Anybody heard of Gap in the Game? Mm -hmm. That book. Okay, you can go in and say, summarize this book. And give me action items off the strategic to, to implement the strategic ideas of the book. It'll give you a, a one paragraph summary and it'll give you five, six, seven bullet points that you can do. You know, you can do it on, uh, I did it on Outlive with Peter Adia. You know, I said, give me, you know, summarize this book and give me the bullet points of what I can do, you know, how I can make my, you know, improve my life, my performance based on this book. You know, you can do it on any book that it has in its data set. Okay, now if that book wasn't produced yet, it's not going to be a status that then you're going to go out to the web and do it. You know, but all those books were produced prior to 2021. So, which is basically what this slide here is talking about, about in there. Um, and, there and there's a couple workarounds for things too that we'll talk about in a little bit. So, you're doing a really good job kind of keeping this going on track. Well, I'm just listening. You know, he's like chasing squirrels all the time. I think yeah. track, I'll either have everything you have to say in like two words, or you just can't shut me up. I'll just keep rolling. <laughs> so it's hard to put anything in the middle. But I just kind of bounce with the slides. I know get the topic we're talking about in there. Um, this is exactly what we've been talking about here. So, it's okay. When used properly, so this is we, went through that. we started we started the login process. This oh, is, if you don't have um, an account, this is the website you want to go to. And we touched on it a little bit um, with all of the fraud crap that's out there. You want to make sure you want to know what's really there um, because there's a lot. Chark has actually got a really good story from the credit union. Well, I don't know if it's a good story, but it's an accurate story to of what the watch share mm -hmm. as far as they had a, a member that purchased a car online. And um, all of the documentation, everything lined up just right with everything, except for one minor little detail. Uh, the guy didn't own the car, then he sold. Oh, sold the car, and, and we did our due diligence. Everything checked out on the car. VIN number checked out. Uh, everything was perfect. We did all of our due diligence. And I, I, I just told you, I sit on the board of a, of a small credit union here in Salt Lake, and so um, this came up to the board because there was fraud in that. And when we looked into this, you know, one of our concerns was that our employees and our staff do everything they were supposed to do. And they actually went above and beyond everything they were supposed to do to make sure they didn't do it. And this borrower insisted on buying this car. So basically, he has a $40,000 loan on the air right now. Mm -hmm. He doesn't own the car. The car doesn't, isn't around. They can't even find the car. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what he did is he created a fake website. He created all this fake information and everything, put it all online. This guy saw it. He decided to buy the car, came to the credit union, he got the loan, he qualified for the loan and everything, we checked the bin, we checked all this information, yes, everything checked out, okay? And even, even the information about the owner checked out, okay? Mm -hmm. wow. But it wasn't him. So he got, we got, gave the borrower the money, the borrower wired the money to the guy and 
never got a car. So he never even saw a car, though. He just saw he never saw a car. How often does that happen? A lot more than we would care to do. Yeah. yeah, it happens. Stuff like that, fraud, and, and that's one thing about the technology. You know what? There's going to be people who are going to use it for the wrong reasons. And it's going to get priced on the car. Uh, no, 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 trade my price. No. Otherwise, that might have been a red flag for you. <laughs> well, again, that, it's just being skeptical. It's using our common sense to go, does this really make sense? And can I verify this? The one thing he didn't do in this is, is we just verified the vehicle. That's what we had to do to make sure that we're doing this properly. We had to verify and make sure the vehicle was legitimate. It was actually, and everything matched up. The 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 bin number and everything matched up. It was supposed to, you know, we checked the database and stuff, and everything was right. But what he didn't do was verify was that information he was getting was correct. And that's the same thing we need to do with Chat DTP. We need to make sure that the information that we're getting out of uh, out of an AI product is actual, accurate information. Okay. Now it's not saying we're verifying everything, but you know, when you look at it, it's common sense would tell us: is this making sense or not? How do you verify that? Take some of the information. But well, that's that's where understanding your business and being an expert in something. If you aren't sure, you reach out to somebody you know it is. And so it, it's a lot of what I would call due diligence. Um, I've got some prompt examples in there that I, I think you might be a little bit entertained with, but they're stuff that you could look at. And if you didn't know anything about real estate, you might think, oh, that's yeah, cool, no problem. Mm -hmm. So one of the things Steve, Steve and I were playing a little bit about financing for properties. So we typed in properties like this is a rural property on, on this size of the lot with a well, a septic tank, uh, a private road with a private maintenance agreement on it and stuff. And it says, can we get finance? Chat VP said, yeah, you can get financing on that. It's not as easy as it sounds. And it didn't talk about a couple of things, you know, the road went through forest service land, you know, all these kind of things in it. And so it didn't know. It just didn't know that, you know, but a, okay. a professional, somebody in the industry would go, wait a minute, these three things are kind of red flags with this. Yeah, has anyone ever financed a house for the only heat sources of which so? <laughs> you can do it in chat GTP. <laughs> Wait, actually, you, there are cabins on the house. That's, that's recreational. It's, yeah. Yeah, I'll be not the same as a, a single family house. Well, well it, it depends on the type of financing, but as a, a rule of thumb, uh, unless a property was built before a modern internus was a thing mm -hmm. and it's never been upgraded and it's common for the area to have it. Um, then you're going to have most lenders and most pro programs saying, you know, we're not lending on that unless you put a modern heat source in, in there. So we've only got about 20 minutes left, so I'm going to make sure we get to the help of me. I'm going to uh, just Wait, yeah. read it off the screen. Okay. One thing, who doesn't have a chat GPT login? They may not. Don't. You don't? Mm -hmm. Will you get one? Yeah, I am going to. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Anybody basically. else? Go in there and it's basically just kind of follow the, the prompts in there. Last for your email to put in some new stuff. If it starts asking for minor details like credit card number or social, so you're probably not on the right site, you probably okay. won't stop. Yes. <laughs> I took a photo of it. <laughs> I'll do that. And, and so uh, do since everybody else has one, and Lynn's gonna yeah. get one. Yeah. When you yeah. go into the when you get in on the internet, yeah. if you get on the internet, will you go and, and you can create a shortcut in the video? We didn't go into that here, but you can create a shortcut. I have a shortcut, so I just click on it, and it just opens up and is it better to do it on your computer or does it is it okay to do it on your phone? Go okay, either one. Either, either one. Either one. No. Um, I don't have it on my phone because 90 times nine times out of ten. Yeah, 90 times out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> 90 times. Uh, if so I'm yeah. using it on my yeah, computer. On. So oh, okay. Yeah. Um but and, that very well might change at any given moment. And, and when the only thing that we want you guys to do is use it every day for something, something simple. Just when you log into it, just use it for something. It'll, it'll spark ideas. It'll start to get the vision of uh, what it can be used for, how you I, can use it. I think I'm not sure if you guys watched the watched the the, the interview that we did with uh, Jeff before for this class. But I went in, and it's kind of embarrassing, so I, I don't want my wife to know this, but um, <laughs> I went in, and, and, and I, I, I was struggling a little bit for my girl. Oh. And so I went in there, and I said, you know, I've been, been married 25 years, and I gave some details and stuff about it, and I said, could you help me write a really sweet Valentine's Day mark over my and it gave me this information. I think I changed three or four words in it. You know, sure, I wrote awesome. it out on the card. I gave it to her. And she goes, honey, this is the sweetest Valentine's card you've ever written me. And I'm like, oh, I didn't know if I should be hurt or if I should be happy or what. I was like, oh, thank you. you know? It was perfect. It did a really good job. Again, a lot of it was the prompt. But so I use it for everything. 
I'm having trouble yeah, finding. It's good, right? Hey, it's better than go to the grocery store and pull them off the freaking rack. Yeah. Uh, I, I did that. Yeah. My daughter should call me up. Are you dying? One of the really cool things about Chat GTP is you can tell it what tone to put it in when it writes. Apparently, they did a dying tone. Yeah. You want a very serious tone to get that thing about. <laughs> they, they even have a tone for Steve, smart ass tone. Uh, <laughs> they, you know, they you can tell what kind of tone you want something right in, and you can continue to refine that prompt. Again, like we talked about, you can continue to refine that prompt to kind of get it to look like what you want. And then when you look at it, let's make sure that it makes it sense, it sounds like you, and you're ready to go. But it, it's amazing what you can use it for. But just using it for simple stuff like that. If I'm struggling with an email, I use it for that. If I can't come up with a list for something, if I need an idea. It's great if you're, if you're having if you've got a block and you need an idea for something like Marty, big pull plug yeah. at Jeff's house. I got one for Jeff. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to respond to a text? I don't know what to get Lynn for the other skill. Yeah. Hey, but Charlie, one thing this might go to Eric and Lynn because they are the only ones that I know that list a lot of houses. So um there is a GPT setting or um I'm not sure if it's a setting or if it's a different URL that you go to. And it's called real estate listings and property descriptions GPT. This was so all just in my mind. So you it's read my mind specifically a filter that you go to that allows you to write better listings when you're listing out. So I can I can give you this. Yeah. I, I picked this up in some other thing I read or whatever, and I created a bookmark for it. So I got yeah, it. What is it again? Real estate. Right? It's called real estate listings and property descriptions GPT. <clears throat> And I'll, and so, like, I'll just I'll email this yeah. to you guys. And this yeah, is thank you. This is one of those apps that's that's powered by GTP. It's not, it's probably not an open AI. Okay, so that but it's powered, powered by GTP. So what it's doing is it's going in and grabbing all of that knowledge that GTP has, okay, that it's that it's learned off of, and it's helping create so it's helping to put in the right words. And one of the interesting so, things oh, go sorry, ahead. it says so the URL says chat.openai.com forward slash blah 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 blah. So I don't that, could be for, that could be from OpenAI because they, they do have, there is a, there is a it, GTP I, store now mm -hmm. in OpenAI mm -hmm. on, and you can go into that GTP store and you can, you can, there's all kinds of stuff. There's just, you get lost in there. It's like a candy store. You know? Which Terry probably really loves. Yeah. Well, that's, that's, that's probably that's why we was working so hard to get the slides oh, together yeah. because I don't know. I don't when know. home PC became the thing. I don't know if you remember that you, you buy one latest and greatest, but I remember that time you got the home in a box that it was already out there. Yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, that's like the uh, slow uh, version of this because you see, you know, I do it. Yeah. I'm going to look at that. Not, I don't want to, Bruce, I could probably find it in the store, but I. What is uh, uh, Eric? Is it Eric's at Eric SLC at Gmail? Is that you, Eric? Uh, no, I've equity, got the equity at oh. LLC. Equity associate. There we go. But uh, one of the things that's cool about GTP, the way that it does that, the way it helps with those listings, is when it puts a word down, okay, it looks at every other word that it's delivered in that response and tries to predict what the next very best word would be based off of its learning through that knowledge database. Okay. I wish I could be, I wish I could remember what I said three minutes ago, you know, but be able to go back and look at that whole conversation and go, this is the very, out of all of this expansive knowledge and information and data that it has, it says, this is the very best word based on what they're asking me to say next. And then it takes the next word and does the same thing. And that's one of the reasons it uses so much power. When <laughs> chat DP is in a massive amount of power. If, if you're trying to distill something down or up or uh, in there, um, a couple of really easy things once you're actually into it. Um, this is what it's going to look like when you're in three five and start typing whatever you want there. Mm -hmm. As soon as you hit go, it will start and giving you a response. Now, if you type anything in there again, right. it's right. going to take all of the information yeah. that it gave you and you gave it, and that's going to be a new tweet. Okay. That's that one chat. And so you go on and on and on asking about the same thing. So when you're ready to do a completely fresh, different topic, or whatever, you still want to get chat. Um, and then as you do them, they'll start going up in here. So if you want to go back and reference something that you did a month ago, two months ago, or whatever, and maybe you're juggling four or five emails, um, uh, especially if you're, you know, I always have to remind myself sometimes, don't get mad. Uh, <laughs> so... Um, you can start there and then you can come back to it and refine it a little bit better. You name but, them like naming a file? 
Kind of. It, it'll just start, it's, it'll name it for you as you go. It saves the prompt. It saves the prompt. So you just look at the prompt. Yeah. The prompt, so these prompts will be listed here. So it'll just save that prompt. Can you, yeah. can you change the name of it? I've never yes. tried. Yeah. So um, I think I have changed the name of some of mine because I, some of them are long. You know, you get yeah. Or I wanted something that's going to trigger my brain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. That, keep in mind, though, that if you don't let it, if you don't let it contribute to that knowledge to grow itself, then it won't save that for you. You'll have to do it again. Okay. But as long as you're letting it contribute to that other thing, keep it in there. Yeah. So this is, I think we talked a little bit about web chat, UTP. Um, this, so this is how it connects to the internet. And this puts in some prompts. Um, <clears throat> oh shoot, a AI, I'll have to look it up, I can't remember. There's another one that I just I just found out about that actually is a prompt generator that's, that, that uses a AI, P PRM, I think it's called, um, that, that I haven't played with yet. I don't know anything about but that. That is, looks interesting too, because it really helps. It's just a tool to help generate prompts when you're writing them. So if you're struggling writing a prompt, which I, sometimes I can't figure out how to work something, I need a prompt generator to help you do that. Where do you find this? So no, this is just a, a, a plugin. Okay, so if you go to OpenAI, you can download this uh, web chat. Uh, Oh, well, a browser plugin. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. It, yeah, it's just a, a chat GTP plugin, basically. And so it, it basically, you know, just go in and you log into this. This is a different login um, with the one. Uh, what is the login? I have it on my computer. If you, if you type in web chat GTP, you'll find that. That's how I found it. Because I heard somebody mention that. I'm like, oh, what is that? And I'm like, oh, that's cool. Capability, depending on the cover that time, you all that. Difference. So this is the word limitation 3,000 word response, 25,000 word response. Um, again, it can it can read text and image prompts in four, which you can do in Bing and Gemini, but you can't do that. You can do that. So, this, this is kitchen. where you could take a picture of a kitchen and say, right, new description. You can ask for bucks a month. Yeah. yeah. I think we, I mean, a lot of this, does anybody want to do some actual, do you want to do some actual prompts? Because we're going to run out of time. Yeah, let's, let's play with some of You must let us know we lost people. If you want to keep running through these, we can fast move fast. Or do you want to play with it and cancel the prompts we have? What do you guys want? Sorry, the music started, and so we're like, you want to keep going on this? Okay. Plugins. Okay. So. Lauren, so so that. when you go to plugins, the one thing about most of the plugins is some of them are available for the free version, but most of the plugins you're going to have to pay for um, Chat GTP for to get it. Um, but there's all kinds of stuff. Prompt Perfect, which is a prompt plugin, of course. Um, SEO searches, you can do it to optimize SEO searches. So when you're writing articles and stuff like that, you say, how do I optimize this blog post? How do I optimize this YouTube uh, video? Stuff like that for that. Uh, Wolfgram is the one that I think Steve mentioned about math. You're doing a lot of math. Chat DP kind of blunt math, so maybe a little bit math, but you can go into add like on Wolfram. Wolfram and then it'll, it'll do that for you, Wolfram. Well, then you can do your quantum. So, so it's really at least plug in something that's going into my browser. Yeah, it, it's incorporated into Chat GTP inside of the browser. Inside your brain, inside your. It's, it's not saving anything on my browser, then it's plugging into the chat. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. So, so it would be when, when you do the pick building, you're going to have an access to all these plugins. <laughs> I don't know how many there is. There's a lot. You know, when you look at and are they all available in paid versions? In the paid version. Most of them. Like the web chat that we looked at, you can do that on the free version. Right. Okay. So, there are some plugins available for the free version, but if you want, all of the plugins are really robust plugins and stuff like that. Like, let's say you want it to be able to read a PDF, you want to upload a PDF and have it read it. There's not a free plugin that I've found for a plugin for the free version that I've found for that yet. Are the plugins usually free and you only buy the version, or do you buy the version? Most of the plugins? most of the plugins that I've dealt with have not had any additional cost to them. You just have to pay for the version of Chat GTP to get the plugin. Gotcha. Like a PDF, Adobe would probably have a plugin version for their PDFs, right? Yeah, Adobe has the, the AI, yeah. not Chat GPT, but they have AI built into Adobe. But real, really good example there is you got a bunch of contracts that are all PDFs, load them up into it, and you're driving along and you're thinking, oh, crap, well, I got some due diligence that's coming up and raised blue dates and contracts are going to expire. Um, you can literally, while you're driving, you know, talk into your memos. 
and basically say, please prioritize or let me know which contracts are expiring today or so forth. And then load that in, and then it will send you back bullet points, which were which. Mm -hmm. So it makes it easier, especially when you get a lot of things juggled. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's probably where I should have stopped. Right yeah. There. This plug in one. So these are all the kind of things you did. This is more than one of the SEO searches. So these are just, and if you go to that plugin store, like I said, it's it's like it's like a candy store. And you find that from within inside your GPT login. Yes. Another place. Yeah. So if you go to OpenAI, okay, that's where the plugin store is, and then OpenAI. Okay. So if you go in there, you can find all. I mean, most of them, at least the ones I've looked at, most of them, I have to have the paid version of these, which I don't have because I'm using Gemini and Copilot, but. If you go in and you build and install all these, and so if you're doing again, if you're using it as a power user, you're using it a lot. You're going to want some of these plugins because they're just going to make things so much more effective. You know, you're going to be so much more effective in what you do. Do I go to back up? I'm seeing people get pictures. Yeah, okay. Show them. We can. I'll put these slides in our team Facebook group too. And I can you know I'm saying this is we talked about this earlier. This is how you can opt out if you don't want to share. Um this is where we kind of got into some of the things you can do with it. Oh, we're just gonna do that, but I don't think record anything. But like an example in there is um you can record a staff meeting and you say, okay, you're gonna follow up on this property, you can follow up on that property, um, you're bringing lunch next week or you know, whatever it is. And then at the very end of it, you say, give me a summary of the meeting and give me bullet points so who has assignments and what, 10 seconds or less. And everybody can have that as they're walking out of the meeting. So. And one of the things that's cool about some of the AI tools that are out now, like using Zoom. Okay, if you, if you have a Zoom meeting, like I, I know a lot of coaches uh, are using this, you know, that are doing online meetings and stuff with coaches. They'll record that conversation as soon as they get off of that. The AI application that they're using takes all that information and distills it into a bullet point list of assignments for the person they're doing. They can send that to them literally within like two minutes. Fathom. Yeah. Fathom. Yeah. Fathom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Have you used it? Twice. It's amazing. I've been on Zoom calls where it, it pops up and says, Hey, I am an AI yeah. assistant. Yeah. Note taker. Notes, the note -taker. But, but Fathom um, sounds like it sounds like it's a little bit different because it's not just taking notes, but then it summarizes it and does action items and stuff mm -hmm. off of it, right? Yeah. 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 Amazing. Yeah. And this is a big whole thing too. And even has the, your Zoom video recording in there. So you can go to certain spots and it highlights the big times down there. there. It's incredible. Yeah. It's amazing. It's free. It's free. Mm -hmm. it's free. Mm -hmm. What kind of coaching do you do? Mm -hmm. Are you in coaching or you were getting coached? Um, it was, mm -hmm. I actually just learned about it oh. with someone else I was on the Zoom with. Oh. Like, That's incredible. But, yeah. Nothing to do with real estate. It's pretty cool. Yeah, very cool. Well, it could be though, because you know what? If you've got a new agent, you're trying to coach them. You know what you do? What you do on a virtual call with them, and you've got to get them to sign this type of thing. Mm -hmm. You go through that and you send it to them. You know, then then they've got accountability for it. Say, I'll call you next week. We're going to go through this. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And we've been talking a little bit. Yeah. About that. Um, we talked about that. Excel. Um, talked about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, Copilot we talked about, so this is just Bing's version, Edge's version. Um, I think next is Gemini, which is Google's version. Yeah, Gemini. This is this is the one we talked about. Yeah. So this picture is one hundred percent computer generated from this right here. Basically says generate an image of the computer oh. car driving through old map road surrounded by nature. But we sort of get you there. And it does it in seconds. It does it in seconds. And if you don't like what you've got, you can just type in and try again. I can't believe anything anymore. <laughs> <Hi. laughs> so I, 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 was, I was messing around with the other day and I, I stumbled across this and I can't remember where I found it, but it was an AI generated image of paper airplanes flying like a flock of birds in through trees. Hmm. I don't know who even thought of that. I'm like, okay, I don't think I could have thought, yeah. have thought of that, but it's amazing how cool it was because it was this whole flock of paper airplane planes flying through these trees. Hmm. It's amazing what it can generate. It's so sometimes good. it makes mistakes, and I can put three legs on a person. And it, it, I've seen some of those too. Yeah, <laughs> you've got to look at it to make sure yeah. what you're getting is what you're expecting. Yeah. You know, one of the things that I, uh, Steve and I, I talked to him a little bit about this before too, is that think about think about 
chat AI in, in general, but specifically chat DTP, as you're a movie director, okay? You're directing a movie and you have a character playing a role. And so what do you do when you have a character playing a role? Okay, you tell them exactly what kind of persona you want them to do, what they're going to be doing, what results you want. And they can do, a good actor can do any role. One of, one of the uh, examples I like to use, anybody know who Dwayne Johnson is? Okay, mm -hmm. The Rock. <laughs> so I, I do like to, I do like to watch action movies when I when I have any free time and I, I like to watch Willie Johnson. I think he's kind of funny. But he played the Tooth Fairy. Anybody see the movie <laughs> the Tooth Fairy? He was a Tooth Fairy. He was my yeah, yeah. He, yeah, he played the Tooth Fairy, but he can also play, you know, in Fast and Furious, you know. Mm -hmm. And so it's pretty cool that AI can do that same thing. You tell it the persona you want it to take on, you tell it the actions you want it to take, you tell it how it will. How you want it to deliver that and it will do that for you so think about it when you're making those prompts tell it the persona you want it to take you know so it takes on your persona and there's actually and we're getting way off topic but there's actually a, some apps out there one of the ones i've just started looking at that you it will record you and record your voice and it can start building text off of your voice off of your persona how you talk so it talks in the same tone and manner that you do it, it's, and that's where I can help with like this part right here. And so when you're using it for like scripts or so forth, you could literally type out what you want to say. And if you're using the stuff that we create, your mannerisms and your voice and everything, it can actually say it for you. But it can be a good training tool for a new agent. Um, if you want to tweak your normal script when you're talking with somebody, because we all use some version of the script, whether it's a formal one we're reading like this, or it's just something we're doing in row as we're working with people. Um, it's a lot of the same things over and over again. Um, and that's where you can analyze it a little bit and see how to make this better. Hey, Steve, I got a question. Um, you mentioned the difference between uh, text size that you can get out of the free versus the, what about like uploading video for, <laughs> getting the same thing, a summary version, bullet points, an outline from a video, or having it learn, like it was a video I did and I wanted to learn mm -hmm. mannerisms and speech patterns and stuff like that. Can you upload a video in there? Yeah, not not into ChatGTP, but there's all that. That would be a, uh, I don't know, an extension. Is that, no, it's, um, it's at the end. Yeah, it's a very... Okay. And Descript is one of the ones that will do that. Yeah. So, so Descript, what's cool about... Descript, I'm going to say it really quick, but it will take a video, it'll transcribe it, and then if you want to edit it yourself, you can go in and you can just cut out the, the words out of the text, and it will shorten the video without those words in it. Mm. Really, really cool. So doing things like, is anybody posting Instagram reels, doing stuff like that? Um, I was just, thinking about it, but I never know. Yeah. People think about it all the time. <laughs> stuff like that. There, there are apps out there that seriously make it so easy. There's an app out there that will that will do a green screen on your phone, okay? It will it will go up and, and give you your, your you can either do it as a script or a text, and you can look at it, talk on your phone while you're doing that, and they nobody can tell. You're looking at the phone, and it's just like a very natural. Telephone. Yeah. It's like a tele, it's a teleprompter on your phone with a green screen. And so you can put up whatever you want. You can put up an image of a, of a house that you're not even at and talk about this house, you know? You can take a video of a house and do a voice overlay with that video. Uh, with your voice by typing in the text once it's learned your voice, the, that, that app will allow you to do that and you can do a voiceover for that video. So you can do a walkthrough video and then you're saying we got walk-in closet, so we got a nice big jacuzzi over here, um, fireplace and whatnot, and as someone's watching the video, it's your voice narrating what you're seeing. So, We went through that. Are we out of time? I feel like we're probably about okay, there. Cool. Right? Okay. And so this is um this is actually out of chat GTP though. Yeah. So, so when you type something in this, and here's what it says write in write a prospect, uh, <laughs> write a prospecting script for real estate agents calling cold leads to attend a first time home buyer seminar. That was the, the extent of the problem. Okay, and this is all the stuff that it delivered for that. And again, you can refine it. You know, you can yeah, you, you can say make this shorter, make it longer, bullet point it, give me action items, stuff like that. Oh, um, property listing, we talked a little bit about that. Um, crafting MLS descriptions, persuasive calls to action, um, video script we talked about, captions tailored for your property listing. You know, you can use it for all kinds of stuff like that. 
Uh, so this, and, and we're telling right here, it's just telling ChatGTP what it is. It says, you're a real estate agent, ChatGTP. Create a listing description with a three bedroom, three bath, open concept kitchen, master suite, built in fireplace, houses in a sunny retirement neighborhood, large porches, walking distance to the beach. That's not my house. Um, <laughs> and I the description near any other characters, okay? So you put that in and it'll, and so this again, it's a listing description, so it's short. You can extend that, you can make it shorter. You can add emojis to it, but the next one, see, I think it'll pull up a few Oh, open house marketing. You can take that same script and do open house marketing with it. So this is that, basically that same prompt. Same, I think. same yeah. prompt, but it was pull up rewrite it for an open house with emojis. Free version. You have to ask it for what the emoji is. You have to paste it in yourself. Yeah, paid version. You can choose. So it, it will actually incorporate. That might be worth it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, so if you use it, you know, I just have a list of emojis. I use it as copy and paste. But if you're using it a lot, you may want to do that, and we'll put the emojis in and stuff. If you're into emojis, not everybody is. I can a lot of people not have this. Next script: uh, email and social media management. Okay, emails. I don't typically, I respond sometimes to emails without chat GPT, but if I have to write GPT, if I have to write an email to somebody like, uh, it's it's a new opening email, like potentially a new a new borrower that I'm working with, or if I have to contact something about a, a, a tense situation, you know, like that's it. I need to, I need help addressing this. You know, I'll copy the email I got, paste it into chat GPT, and say, I need to address this, but I need to have empathy for what this person is feeling and the tone that I want it to, and it'll help me write that email. Yeah, I, I view this as really great for that, uh, what I said earlier, is you don't type me up. <laughs> so, so I think that's hard to figure out how to do that. You know, you want to watch your tone in doing that, you know, it can really help bring through the tone that you want in that email, even though I struggle with being able to type it in there. Mm -hmm. um, lost leads, yeah, uh, written by ChatGPT. SEO friendly search subscription theory, uh, content. So if you're running out of ideas, you can just say, give me some ideas for, you know, you know, give me 10 ideas, 25 ideas, but you know, just how you want, and then it'll start spitting stuff back and you can look through it and say, yeah, it's a great idea. No, no, done that. Um, many of those. And you can, yeah, and changing the prompt is really important. Don't stop with one prompt. I think that's in the slide here pretty quick. Facebook, <laughs> we're posting on Facebook. I have been so resistant to Facebook for some years. My wife created one from years ago, and I just barely, I just got a friend request from you, too. I guess <laughs> not yeah. well, I have quite I tried to tag you in a post, and it's like, oh, what are you doing? I, I, I forgot how to accept the friend request, but I just see the layout on you. I've been so resistant to that. I'm like, okay, I gotta get into Facebook. Yeah, no wonder you're so happy you don't use that piece. Yeah. <laughs> it's something in the vortex. Yeah, the social fabric destroyer. <laughs> and then we add copy and leave magnets. Um, again, anything that you're going to. People are using this to write books. Yeah. 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 And that's book for A lot of people are using public books now. And it's not plagiarism as long as you're you're, you're crafting the idea, you're you're giving it you're giving it the, the direction you want it to go and stuff like that. You know, you're creating yourself, even though Chat GPT is helping you come up with the actual text for that book. You know, you're reading through that and you're creating it. So if you want to, especially if you're doing stuff like one of the things that I want to start doing, and I haven't I just tinkered with it a little bit, is writing ebooks. So when people click on something that, that you know we posted or something like that, and they want they want an ebook on, you know, what are the Five best things to do when you're staging your house for a, for a listing. You know, cool, you can sure. create a little ebook and put that in there so that you can use it as a lead magnet. They put in their phone number and their email, and then you know you send them a PDF copy of that book. So uh, the always fact check if we get time. There's a, a prompt that I made up that you might be entertained with that I want to show you guys in there. And all of these things again. Anything that you're, anything you're trying to come up with, any type of language, um, even if you want to do it in Chinese, I don't. I don't it will translate to different languages, but that's yeah. also really a really good example. Is if you don't speak the language you're translating it into, you want to make sure someone who does reads it. I use that for Spanish. Well. Yeah, yeah. And I've heard it's pretty good on most of them. But you know, they say if you get somebody that's a native speaker and they read it. They can tell you, yeah, you know. I'm just trying to get the point across. I yeah. Don't care. <laughs> but, but, <and> it's <laughs> That's all we can do. Because um, Kim sneeze and Mandarin Chinese are fascinated by that. What does those characters like? How does it do that? Uh, 
technical SEO improvements. So if you're working on a website, if you guys have got, you know, if you're doing your own website, you're trying to figure out how to get more search engine optimization out of it, it can walk you through that. It knows all of that stuff. TechDP is very well versed in all of that. Um, again, doing blog posts. Energy efficient mortgage. Again, but when you do an energy efficient mortgage, have somebody that does loans for you that knows FHA and knows energy efficient mortgage and looks at that and make sure it's accurate before you post it. Okay. It's an energy Unless you're a subject matter expert on them, if you know it. Then um, you, you can stretch ratios on an FHA loan uh, if you're doing an energy efficient mortgage. And so with that, you're adding something like upgraded windows or um, insulation, different things that'll make the house more energy efficient. And they'll call it an energy efficient mortgage. And that will allow the loan officer to get higher uh, debt income rates from the two from what other ones. Adding to a blog post. So if there's a blog post, you can add it into that. So this was added to that previous blog post and it talked about all the energy efficient uh, benefits from the FHA mm -hmm. loan. We talked about that about yeah. the signs. We're getting ideas for the entire year. This is a little bit where that counts. This is where you can integrate it with your calendar. Yeah. 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 And I haven't tried it, I haven't tried a plugin yet to integrate it with my calendar because I've got so much stuff on there now and it'll be a bit confusing, but it will produce a calendar for you. You can tell it to do it in a table format, it'll actually produce so you can say, I want to do a post once a week for the next year. Give me 52 ideas uh, with context for them for a weekly blog post, and then it'll produce that. This is what I'm actually starting to incorporate for myself because when I'm really good about time blocking, I magically get really efficient, get a lot done. Mm -hmm. And when I get too busy to time block, I magically don't get that efficient and forget a lot of shit. <laughs> Let's keep going through these slot analysis. Any, anything to do with business stuff, it's great at it. Everyone knows what SWAT is? Swat? Yeah. No. I always looked at it and I was thinking it sounds kind of like you're saying snot, but it's uh, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And so when you're doing a, a business plan or analyzing something, you always want to look at it from that standpoint of is this something that's playing in that strength? Is this a weakness? Is it an opportunity or is it a threat I have to deal with? And if you're doing something like this, let's say you take that prompt and you go into chat GPT and put that in there and say, I want to do a SWOT analysis. What do you need to know from me to be able to complete that for me? And it'll give you the questions that it needs you to answer to be able to complete that. Okay. And, and that's where a really good thing with the prompts, um, because you're all prompt engineers now, uh, is using it, uh, telling it to assume the role you want it to be. So you can say, I'm an office manager, or you are an office manager, and this is you know, probably dealing with, or you are a realtor, or you are a marketing agent. Um, just tell it to assume that role, and then as it replies, it'll give you from that perspective. Yeah, I've heard people say that one of the keys to getting most value out of it is you have to kind of know how to ask the question or set it up with this prompting uh, approach. Yeah, and, and I think the key to that is telling it to ask you questions. Mm, there you go. Well, and, and, that, and that's a key because a lot of times you don't know that you don't know, so you don't know what to ask. Yeah. So I, I don't quite get the prompt. Can you like save the prompts and keep building yeah. on that prompt? Yes. Yeah, so so that's what you, I don't understand how to do. So if I'm if I'm doing real estate over here and I'm doing whatever over here and whatever over here, mm -hmm. you can you categorize those prompts or how does that well work? I think it puts it creates a history over on your your luck margin. So yeah, yeah you, know, you do want to you do want to try to keep your your thought thread separated, then you can jump back and forth. So you can go back to a previous conversation. Yeah. 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 It's like it's like a so you hit that conversation and it'll yeah, and all of that things that your real estate's in that one, and then you have a different conversation about the other and thing. And it keeps that like daily history. So every time you go into a hospital pump, it keeps that information. In. I've tried it on pictures, and they all come up totally different every time I put add this or add this to a picture, and it'll come completely different. Do what program are you doing that in? Chat GP. So you're, you got the papers in the chat GDP to put images. I just in? got it on map on my phone. I wonder if it's actually the chat GTP app. It might be a different. It might be a different app. In the actual GTP app, you you can um, chat on again, AI. GPT, not GPT, TP. Where you still is just the same. Oh, oh, I have a wife. What again? I'm a little bit dyslexic. I know what you mean. I keep expressing those people. Just say cat. But yeah, so so right here, 
Um, you, that, that's this will be the history of your phone. Okay. Yeah, see, I use that on my desktop, so, but I have a different one on my phone. And you, you'll be able to go back and see the answers that's given to you previously. But if you go into, say, you got an old chat over here um, about I don't know, cats. Um, and if you type in here again, anything you type, it'll build up of what it did before, but it's not going to give you the same answer every time. So oh, you can go back and scroll. You can even tell summarize this entire conversation and then it'll bring it all back. And if you're if you're doing if you're doing cats, and let's say you're doing one on dogs, you need to go back to that original prompt. Because it, it, it will if you start typing your your thing in your your question about cats and the dog, it'll be a little bit confused because that wasn't Maybe the that's conversation. Doing it wrong. That wasn't the conversation it was having with you. You had a, you were having a cat conversation about dogs, and now you're asking this about cats. Okay, so you do need to go back to that prompt and can and you can continue that prompt and you can ask it back then. You can say, Oh, this was four days ago. Say, can you summarize our conversation? And you can can you remind me what we originally were talking about? And then I'll come back and say, Yeah, let's see what we're talking about. Just think of like a conversation. Yeah. Your conversation yeah. is all about this yeah. topic in this one, this topic. Yeah. This one. And when I mean, you're ready to start something new or totally different, so it's got a cat. This is a pretty bizarre picture. That I yeah, see, Don, I mean, it, it keeps a history right here in this left yeah, margin yeah. of all the yeah. things that you have been talking to it about. See, I, I usually do it on my phone. I'm like, not doing much. Yeah, it's easy to make the pictures look like they come from a Pink Floyd album. Mm -hmm. so. Oh, it's worse than that. Let's wrap this up. We're probably left. Well, we're back. Hey Steve, can you step on that one about plugins? I want to get a picture of that. Um, let me jump to the very, the very last slide. I think it is is got probably a better spot on plugins. You just said that one list. It was a bunch of lists. I want to take a picture. That that was some SEO stuff. Yeah, we'll go back there. I think he's going to get to. Let me jump to because we were close to the end. Did you say you could email this to us? Oh, yeah, and I think Jeff's yes, yes, oh, yeah. something there. So this is like where we were. I should have from. Did you sign up? Yeah, Rich. Okay, I don't even know what I mean. If you have questions about it, <laughs> I, I'm here yeah. all month. I know, I but but I love talking about it. So, and Steve and I can help you with it. Email us, um, which we neglected. We got stuck in all, all the in all the, mm -hmm. all the technology, but um. Love to help you with it to help you build your business because we learn too every time every time we touch on it or something. Um, speaking of questions, since we're where we're at on time, um, let's see if anybody on Zoom has any questions or whatever, and then we can kind of wrap this okay. up. But we can stick around and absolutely do some yeah. good answer. Any, do, anyone on Zoom have any questions? Yeah, I have a quick question. You can answer. This is Stacy. Um, okay. I've used Chat GPT a little bit. I've just dabbled with it. But one of the things I run into is when I want to take that information that I've generated and like move it into a Word document or an email. How do I copy and paste it? Like it doesn't seem to like that activity. Is there an easy way to move that data so I can expand on it and edit it? Well, what would I have done? I've been able to copy. Control C over there. Well, it, <laughs> typically, typically stays. Okay, and again, I'm using the free version, but I put my cursor right at the very first word of the, of the response, and then I do Control Shift N, and it goes to the end of the response. And then I just do Control C copy. And I, I use a, a Mac or a P, not a not a Mac. I use a PC. So I think it's different on a Mac. I think it's Command Command C. Yeah. But then I just copy it, and then that copies immediately, and then I just go in and paste it into my document. Yeah. No. no it has a copy button on there. You just click it, and it saves in it. I've tried it on the phone. I've, oh. I've always done it on the computer. Yeah. But, you know. Maybe double check that you're in the Open AI website. Oh yeah, I definitely am. Yeah, I've gotten right. it with them. Mm -hmm. And it just won't let you copy when you use the hot key. I told you it was probably oh, something really yeah. simple that I would say. Click it and it saves it and you just put it where is you there, Is there a clipboard, a, a, a clipboard icon? Mm. I don't know. There's a share link. And so I can just share the entire link and like drop it into a text. Mm. I will, take, let me look into that and I'll email you. Okay, great, thanks. Yeah, I'll find out for sure about that. Because I, I, I just... Honestly, I, I have not I, had that. No, I've not been able to not copy it before, so... Um, yeah. I really can't figure it out. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah I, I, typically, I typically just copy text and then so many different things that I'm copying text out of that I don't look for the 
how the particular application does it, unless I can't get it to do it any other way. You know, like sometimes in Zoom, the only way I can do it is you have to use my Zoom copy, but um, I'll find out and let you know. Any other questions on Zoom? All right, guys, let's kind of just wrap this up based on the time. I know some of you have other places to be, but uh, here in the office, we're going to stick around. Uh, Charlie and Stephen have brought us some pizza. So thanks for that, guys. And uh, so you're welcome to help yourself to that. And then you get, got time to stick around for a little bit yep. and yeah. have some yeah. discussion around it. Yeah, we can do that. For, for those that are on Zoom, since I know we're going to end this, um, a, a fun prompt to play with uh, that can be good examples of needing to understand and know real estate a little bit as you're using it for that is um, ask it to write you a description for a, a nice beachfront estate uh, on the Great Salt Lake. Run <laughs> <laughs> <Right. laughs> right. Hey, and on Zoom, their contact, their contact information is posted in the chat. We didn't have a slide with that on there, so you can copy that if you want to reach out to them later. Perfect. I know they can't see they are, they just want to know how to use all this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys. That was awesome information. Thank you so much for attending. Really appreciate it. See you guys. It.